Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this video. We are with Coach Brian from Terry Chill Academy. Okay, let's look at paper D, question 1. Question 1 makes use of our quadratic formula, which is x plus y bracket, x minus y bracket. You get x squared minus y squared. So let's apply this formula to this equation. As you can see, there's a x minus 16, x plus 16. And there's a x minus 14, x plus 14. So we can write it as x squared minus 16 squared and x squared minus 14 squared. Let's open up the brackets. We will get x to the power of 4 minus 4, 5, 2x squared plus 5, 0, 1, 7, 6. Next step we will use is completing the square. So it's x squared minus 4, 5, 2 over 2 whole thing square plus 5, 0, 1, 7, 6 and we have to minus back the 4, 5, 2 over 2 whole thing squared. And what we'll get is x squared minus 2 to 6 squared. And here we'll get minus 900. And from here we can see that the minimum value of y is equals to negative 900 as we can see that this value can take on 0. So the minimum value of y is 900, therefore your answer is E. Alright, let's look at question 2. In the diagram below, the radius of quadrant OAD is 4 and the radius of quadrant OBC is 8. Given that the angle COD equals to 30 degrees, find the area of the shaded region a, B, C, D. Let me duplicate another model for us to use later. Alright, so firstly, let's add in our angles, which is 30 degrees for COD. Secondly, since we know that OBC is a quadrant, the remaining angle here is 60 degrees. And since we know that OAD is also a quadrant, we can see that angle AOD is 30 degrees. Alright, so for geom geometry questions, what we'll do here is rotating triangle OAB. And where do we rotate it to? We can actually rotate it OAB 90 degrees anti-clockwise. And you realize that it overlaps triangle OCD. Okay, anti-clockwise to overlap triangle OCD. Alright, so from here you rotate it and you'll fit nicely into OCD given that their angles is the same. Alright, so after overlapping, what will it look like? It will look something like this. Alright. And the shaded region will be here. So as you can see, now it will look... Let me erase the bottom part. Okay. As you can see, now it's just the bigger quadrant minus the smaller quadrant. So we can just write our working as shaded area equals to bigger quadrant, which is one quarter pi r squared. And the radius for the bigger quadrant is eight squared minus one quarter pi. And now the radius of the smaller quadrant is 4 squared. So as you can see, it's 1 quarter pi 64 minus 16. Alright, we'll get 48 
pi over 4, which will give us 12 pi. So the answer for this is 12 pi. And since they didn't give any units, we can leave it in units squared. Question 3. Three circles of radius 20 are arranged with their respective centers A, B, C in a row. If the line WZ is tangent to the third circle, find the length of XY. Alright, first thing first, we have to know what is tangent. Tangent means that the line cuts the circle, cuts the circle at a point. Okay, only one point. That means it's tangent to the circle. Let's add in some points for us to form. In the midpoint of x and y, I'll add in a point of p. And where they touch the tangent, wz touches the third circle, I'll add in q. Alright, let's join p to center of circle b and q to center of circle c. And you realize that we can make use of similar triangles. Triangle P, B, W is similar to triangle Q, C, W. Therefore, making use of similar triangles, we can have P, B over Q, C equals to W, B over W, C. This is to find the length of P, B. PB over QC, which is the radius of the third circle, 20, equals to WB, which is equals to 3 radiuses, which is 60, over WC, which is 5 radius, 100. Therefore, PB is equals to 60 over 100 times 20, we will get 12. Next step, since x, y is equals to 2 x, p, since p is in the center of x and y, we can form to make use of our Pythagoras theorem. Okay, I will draw a line from x to b. You realize that it is a right angle triangle. Okay, so here is 20, here is 12. We can find xp, which is 20 squared minus 12 squared. And in the end, you'll get 2 times 16. Answer is 32. And since, again, they didn't specify any units, you can leave it in. xy is equal to 32 units. Alright, let's look at question 4. Find the integer part of this big fraction right here. So first, let's understand the question. What does integer mean? Integer means your whole numbers. Okay, so for example, I can give you an example. Let's say 14, 5 over 6. The integer value will be, the integer value will be 14. Okay, so integer value means you ignore or any decimal or fractions after the whole number. Alright, so this is the example I'll give you guys. Um, if you're going to do this question manually, means adding the fractions one by one, it will take quite some time and it won't be, um, and it won't be very efficient. Therefore, let's make use of finding its range. What does range mean? Means how low can it go and how high can it go? So you just got to find the lowest and the highest and you realize that you can deduce the integer from there. Okay, first things first, instead of seeing so many fractions, why not let's compact it, uh, compact it down. Let L be the fraction below, which is L be 1 over 2003 plus 1 over 2004 all the way to 1 over 2009. Okay, so it look 
this whole fraction will be equals to 1 over L. Okay, so instead of writing 2003 plus 2004, let's change everything to 2003. Okay, it will look something like this. 1 over 2003 plus 1 over 2003 plus 7 times 2003. You'll get 1 over 7 over 2003. And for those who are familiar with this fraction, you can you realize that you can actually flip the bottom fraction up. You get 2003 over 7. And to find a mixed number, you will get 286 1 over 7. Okay, so that is one end. Where's the what's the other end? The other end is 2009. So instead of writing 2003, let's change everything to 2009. So same, likewise, 1 over 2009, add it 7 times. You'll get 1 over 9 over 200, but 1 over 7 over 2009. Likewise, we flip the bottom fraction up. And we'll get 2009 over 7. And it gives you a very nice number, 28. Seven with no fractions or decimal. Alright, so from here we can see that 1 over L falls in between these two numbers. Your range should be 2, 8, 6, 1 over 7, less than 1 over L, less than 2, 8, 7. And from here we can deduce the answer as the integer part will be the integer part will be 286. Why it cannot be 287? Because of this inequality sign. It means less than. It does not have the less than or equals to. Okay, it is a only a less than. So it's in between 286, 1 over 7, and 287. Therefore, the answer will be the integer part is 286. Alright, let's look at the last question, question 5. Let C1 and C2 be distinct circles of radius 7 cm that are in the same plane and tangent to each other. Find the number of circles with radius 26 cm in the plane that are tangent to both C1 and C2. Um, as per previous question, we did learn what is tangent. It means they touch the circle at only one point. Okay, so since this is an MCQ question, we can just do a rough sketch. First, I'll draw two circles of radius 7 cm. Since it's a rough sketch, we don't have to draw in exact dimensions. Alright, so these are my two circles, C1 and C2. C1 and C2. Okay, to do this question, we have to find sides where we can touch both circles at only one point. As you, as you can see, middle is 1. This side is another, another point we can touch, and another point will be here. So, let's draw our circles of radius 26 cm. So, I'll just draw a bigger circle. And as you can see, I can move it here, in the middle, where it will touch both circles C1 and C2 at only one point. And likewise, I can do it at the bottom. Okay, so these are the two circles that will touch the middle. What about the left? What about the left side right now? The left side can be here. Okay, and another one, which is the left side, is somewhere here. It's, it also touches C one and C two at one point. Okay, now time for the right hand side. It will touch C1 and C2 at one point. It's a tangent. And last one, the right hand side, somewhere here. So as you can see, there are a total of six big circles which have radius of 26 cm that are tangent to both C1 and C2. Therefore, your answer is C.
we have completed this lesson. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye and see you again in another lesson.